heating zone going down there. Oh, that could have been naughty. We haven't tied that in. Ah, oh. okay. So we're not done yet. Morning, welcome to today's job. This is a two day job that I'm here. I'm working with Sam. He's got me in on one of his jobs where we're gonna be taking out two boilers and basically rejigging the system because it's a bit of a bit of a mishmash of what's been installed here previously. So just to show you, here's Sam. He's already taken one of the flues out already. Hello. So what we've got here is two combi boilers, an unvented cylinder. Now, cylinder is staying, so that's gonna be where it is, but we're gonna be taking out the two combi boilers, sticking in a system boiler and putting in a low loss header here and basically linking everything out. So at the moment, we've come in and we've marked out all the pipe work. We've got, where we've got two combis, we've got a hot service going across there. Got another hot service coming off of this combi, going around this way, around the back of the cylinder and up there. This is linked to the hot pipe as well. So we're gonna tee that into the hot drawer off of the cylinder. So then everything is gonna be coming off the cylinder. We also need to link this 15 mil hot pipe as well. So we'll figure that out, how we're gonna run all the pipe work afterwards. We've also got, so this boiler is just doing the cylinder and there's another radiator on the other side of this for the downstairs toilet. And then this boiler is doing the central heating for the rest of the property. So plan is we're gonna, like I said, remove these two combis, put in a system boiler there, put in a Lola setter here, put another zone valve for the central heating side. That zone valve's already there for the hot water cylinder, so that's fine. And then obviously rejig the pipe work. Don't need cold services going here, here. So we'll probably just leave one of them to use as a filling loop for the system. Other than that, we can get rid of, cap off whatever other cold services that we don't need. Link the two primary returns, sorry, off the boiler, we're gonna have obviously the uh, primary flow returns going to the low loss and then coming off of the low loss header, we'll split the primary, uh, not the primary flow return, the flows and returns going to the heating and the hot water side. External pump, uh, I've got the Stuart Turner light commercial pump, so we're gonna fit that on there as well. So that should do the rest of the property, it should be sufficient enough. There's about 25 rads here, some big, some small. So that low loss header with that pump should be sufficient to do the cylinder and the heating side. There's no underfloor heating or anything like that, it's all just central heating. So first things first, we're gonna start draining down, make some space, and then we can make a plan as to how we wanna rejig the pipework and what's gonna be the best way to do it because there's gonna be a lot of tying in and things like that that we need to do. So yeah, we'll see how, how much we can cut back, how much we can renew from scratch and then go from there really. So watch your space. The joys of working near Heathrow Airport, constant planes just coming through. In other news, the two boilers off the wall, we did have a bit of a, an incident, shall we say, with the cold mains. We were taking the boiler off. I accidentally undone the nut from the back of the valve rather than in front of the valve. So when we took the boiler off, we had water mains coming out. Uh, but we managed to turn the water off, so all boilers are off. So Sam's just sorting out the flue hole there because we've noticed that there's two cables going around the side there and the flue on the new boiler is short, it's closer to the wall than the old one by about 30 mil. So we need to break the flue hole in order to make sure that the flue will go straight out. So Sam's just sorting that out and disconnect all the wiring from there. So once that's done, we can get this new boiler on the wall, get the flue out, and then from there we can start planning where we're gonna put things inside with the different components. So I've got the new boiler on the wall. We've had to obviously break out the flue hole there a little bit and extend those cables out so that we could get the flue through and then move the cables over. So we'll sort that out once we seal up the flue hole. Now the boiler's here, just gonna go get the Lola header and put the Lola header where we want it. So we've got quite a bit of space here to work with. So in terms of pipework, we're gonna have the flying returns coming off of there. Haven't quite decided, we only need one of these two fuse spares 
to power the boiler. So probably just make one of them redundant, bring the flying return round there onto the low loss header, and then off the low loss will then come off. Still haven't decided exactly where we're going to put the pump and the zone valves, etc. But we're going to get the low loss on there first and then see, make a plan of to where to. We've got to cut all this back as well as far as we can and then see what we can do with it. So here's a bit of a progress update. So boilers on the wall, it's been piped up to the low loss header already. So we've got a flan returns coming off of there. Because it's a valent 637, remember you've got to use the 28 mil filter. So Sam's got the 28 to 22 reducers. So pop those straight in there. All that's been pressed. Now we've gonna next, we're gonna have a little bit of a break, sort out the gas and then figure out what we're gonna do with all this mess here and how we're gonna do the flan returns coming off the low loss. Need to put on two lever valves as well because we're going to be flushing the system side tomorrow and obviously you can't flush it with the low loss in place so I reckon after these two we'll probably just put two lever valves first maybe and then the rest of the pipe work see what happens pumps got to go on we've already got the hot water zone valve there we need to figure out where to put the heating zone valve because the heating flow is that pipe down there uh, so we need to bring that up somehow yeah, there's a lot of jiggery pokery still to do and it's it's about half 12 so we're making decent progress i think today's gonna be a pretty late one because i want to try and get as much done as i can because i'm only here for two days i'm staying at my cousin's in south hall so that it saves me having to travel two hours each way every day so hopefully we'll get all the pipe work done today and then tomorrow i can focus on the flush and the wiring and the little nitty-gritty tidying up bits so Hopefully, we'll see how we go. Right, we're making some progress. It's taking a lot longer than we initially imagined, which always does on a job like this, but it's fine because we had to mess around here a bit. We had a leaking pressure gauge, which wasn't needed. So we had to drain part of the cylinder down to get this done. So we've done that. Hot has been done. Doesn't look pretty, but that's the best way that we could connect it because we had that bend coming up there, which was capped off, that was linked to the hot which is also going up there so all that's been linked out the hot is then that bend over there comes down there into this t and that's that bottom hot pipe there so that's now all connected capped off the dead leg there and the water's back on filling loops done there we have a little bit of a hiccup because the pump i was given oh, i'll put it back in the box uh was the wrong one I've been given a commercial pump, I didn't need a commercial pump, I needed a light commercial pump and that one is just way too big. So Sam's just gone down to City Plumbing to get the right pump and in the meantime, so boiler is all piped up, so flow, return, gas, that's all done. My plan next is I want to get rid of this, these two Y strains. So this is our return. We've also got return coming in from a radiator there and this is our heating return. So plan next is to undo this, try and bring the return round from here over this and then tie it into here, renew that. So I'm going to get rid of all this bit here, try and see how much of this I can get rid of, but that's looking a bit manky. So I don't want to disturb it too much, but we'll see what we can do. So I need to bring that round, I need to tie in the heating return back into here and then bring that up here, put a flushing point and then also need to tee off for an additional expansion vessel because We've got 25 radiators here, so it definitely is, is going to need additional expansion. So there's a bit more pipework configuration to do. But then once the pump's here, we can either decide whether we're going to put the pump horizontal up here or vertical down here and then bring it down. One flow is going to go into there and then maybe put another T coming across here, somewhere there, put a zone valve there and need to tie in the heating floss, which is this pipe here. So probably, uh, I'm not sure yet how we're gonna do that. Maybe bring that along here and then step over here or bring it further. I don't know yet. I hate pipe work. It's my weakness trying to plan pipe work. So it takes me very long to plan this, but we're doing it literally pipe by pipe. So let's see how we get on. Wow, what a day. What a day, but I managed to get it piped up today, which was a plan. So let me just step back and show you what we've done. So system boiler, 
coming down there. Got two flows and well, not two flows. Got a flow and return, feeling the low loss header. Got the header side going down. Pump. That's an eight meter head pump. It's going down there. Splitting heating zone going down there. Oh, that could have been naughty. We haven't tied that in. Ah. Oh. Okay. So we're not done yet. Right, crisis averted. Luckily, I saw that while I was doing the little walkthrough, so just put a T in there and tie the cylinder return back in. So, as I was saying, I'll explain this again tomorrow properly, but yeah, so gas is all done. We soldered the gas, pressed everything else. So that's the final expansion vessels coming off there. Put lever valve there and the lever valve there because we've got a flushing point there. So what we don't want to do is when we're power flushing tomorrow, I don't want to be flushing through the low loss, otherwise it's just going to circulate through there. So this way, I'm going to lock that off. I'm going to lock that off, be able to take that off, put my power flushing point straight onto there, then open that up, leave that locked off. So that will be able to flush on the system and the other flow side, take out the pump and put a pump valve connection on there. And that will then allow me to flush the rest of the side and obviously you can lock it off from there and leave that open, whatever. So now boiler flow and returns are open. Let's make sure that's all done up. Right, now the moment of truth. We want to start putting some pressure slowly. We want to see, hopefully, there's no leaky leakies. Right, I'm going to let that fill up and then report back depending what happens. Well, I'll report back either way if it's filled up or if there's a leak. Okay, so we are up to pressure. I'd say that's probably between one and a half and two so far, other than I had a little weep on there. That bottom nut wasn't tightened up, so there's a little dribble there. No biggie. Other than that, everything is full. Sam, what pressure? All good. All good, yeah. Yeah, I had a little weep here because that was a little bit loose, but nipped it up, so Not that's bad. fine. You've got all the connections. Um, all these are looking good. No drippy drippy anywhere. Happy days. Sweet. So, that's probably sitting at about between one and a half to two bar, roughly. So we'll leave it on test overnight. And then tomorrow we're gonna to come back and do the wiring, gotta sort out that flue hole. And so tomorrow is basically PRV, condense, wiring, power flush, basically all the finishing bits, which although it doesn't sound like much, it's probably gonna take still the whole day, but we really want to hammer it today so that tomorrow is hopefully a little bit of a lighter day. It's still gonna be fairly labor intensive, but at least we haven't got as much sort of, well, we've got no pipe work to do other than the PRV and the condense. Everything else is all done. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to firing off tomorrow and testing it because, Sam, what do you say the customers had? What problems did they have with the system? It's just never worked properly. Never worked. Hot water, heating, never worked. 15 years, never worked. Yeah, so they had two combis here. They've got 25 happy. rads. Happy. Yeah, I mean, there was a tap in there, that tap there. They were saying that they never used to get hot water. Now they're getting hot water because I've literally linked it out to there. So they get hot water everywhere. Even upstairs in the shower, they tested it. They said it's like the pressure is mad different, which makes sense because before it was coming off the combi, now it's coming straight off the mega flow. So yeah, tidy up time and go home. It's not too bad, quarter to eight. So, well, I'm not going to go home. I'm staying at my cousin's tonight because otherwise it's a two hour drive back. And then back here in the morning and then crack on and finish up. Morning, so we are back here at the Isleworth job. First things first, have a quick look. Any leaks? No leaks, which is always a good sign. All right, pressure is exactly where we left it yesterday, so that's an even better sign. So today is going to be power flushing, wiring, PRV, condense and flue. I'm going to be focusing on the wiring and the power flush. So the way that we've set up for flushing is we're going to take the pump out, isolate either side, put one of my flushing adapters onto the pump valve, 
and got another flushing point here so we can lock that off lock that off relieve the pressure then keep that locked off so that when we're flushing we're not going through the header and we're just doing the system and go from there there's about 25 radiators on the system so i don't think it's ever had any work done to it so we'll see how dirty it is hopefully it's not too bad because 25 radiators is a lot granted we could have probably pre dosed the system yesterday however I'm not sure how it works when you've got low loss, so I didn't want the chemical to just basically sit in there and not go anywhere. So that's why we didn't pre dose the system. And that's why we put these flushing points on and lever valves to make sure that we're not just letting the water circulate in the low loss and not go anywhere else. So that's the plan today. Sam's got all of his gear set up. He's going to be, we're just going to be here yeah, finishing up, tidying up, and then going home. Just well, once everything's working. Right, so the power flush is on. So we've set it up outside. I'll take it outside in a minute. So this is how we've set it up. So we've got the flow going to the primary circuits. So that's our central heating and our hot water circuits. So that's off at the moment. That's open. So we've only got the flow going through the central heating side. That's on the return. So that's locked off. So nothing coming up here. But as it returns back, it's just going to return back through here into the power flush machine. So where I've set it up is, well, I had to put it on a little hop up because I need to get the longer hoses really so that I can then set it up wherever I want. So I'm just sorting out the flu. So I've had to sort of set it up like this here on the little hop up. It's got extension lead for the power. Obviously for the element, I've got the long, uh, I've extended the cable, so that's going inside anyway. But the system, to be fair, so far doesn't look too bad. So we're gonna let it circulate for an hour initially. Later we'll do the whole system, see how dirty it is, see how much dirt it picks up, then we'll start isolating radiators and take it from there. So hopefully it's not too bad a flush, but yeah, we'll see. And main thing I just wanna do is I just wanna get it all wired up. Planes are literally coming in every few minutes. I think Heathrow is literally just down there. So all day, every day, they just literally just come in from back there. Might even be able to see another one coming through now. And it's going down there to land, but yeah. We're not here plane spotting, we're here flushing and installing. So as I was saying, I'm just looking forward to getting the system all wired up and getting all up and running. And seeing that look on the customer's face when everything works. He's already happy, he's really chuffed with how it all looks so far. Now we've just got to make sure that it works exactly as we expect it to, so keep you posted. Right, so Sam's just sorting out the PRV and the condens. Power flush is done. I've got all the wiring done as well. So got a Wago wiring center there. So you've got a load of cables coming out of there. Got the Hive Mini up there. And then we've got cables coming out of the boiler from the main fuse spare. And what I've done is with the zone valves, I put the, well, that one already had a fiber connector. I put a fiber connector on that one as well so that if there's any changes that need to be done that you don't have to pull it all out the trunking you literally just disconnect it from the five way and then do your rewiring over there that's come out a bit so i'll pop that in in a bit as well pump as well so we've got the cable coming out there going to the pump everything else is just going down there so cylinder stat is coming down there and the zone valve both going into there and then from here it picks up the pump and blah 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 blah, blah. yep so that is all looking good as soon as Sam's finished up doing the contents in the PRV, I'm looking forward to powering on and giving this test run because, yeah, it's been a big project for me. Probably one of, the, one of this year, one of the biggest jobs I've done this year, I think. I think so. I can't remember all the jobs I've done so far, but probably one of the big one of the bigger ones that I've done. It's only the second job that I've done with a low loss header, and um, so I'm quite interested to see it work. Hopefully, it works properly. Uh, power flush wasn't too bad. The machine's outside. I've just got to clear it all up now. So there's still planes going overhead. So I'm going to clean up the power flush machine. Sam's going to sort out the PRV and the condens. We've kept the flu slightly longer as well because we wanted to go past the eaves. Um, if we had it right up there, it could have got a bit of heat on there. And obviously, Valent allowed the white and shell. So we've deliberately left that a little bit longer so that the plume can go past the eaves. I'm going to tidy that up. As soon as the other stuff's done, we're going to power it on and fingers crossed, it works a dream. Right, so system's all fired up. 
just going to do a little walk around and check all the radiators. So starting upstairs because upstairs is where they said they really struggle getting the heat to. Uh, I think there's three radiators up in the loft and they said they just always had trouble with them getting hot. So that's the first one. 55 degrees all across. Nice and hot. So that's the first one. Second one, nice and hot. Uh, where's, oh, here it is. Cool. So three upstairs that were problems, no longer a problem. That eight meter head pump is definitely doing its job. And I'll show you the boiler in a minute. It is staying at a nice temperature. So in here, yeah. That one's nice and hot. Yeah, I've got heat on there. I've got heat on there. Yeah, yeah. Am I right to just come in and check the radiator? Yeah. 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 Sorry. And that one's so hot. Yeah, that's fine. Is it a thermo? Yeah. Uh, towel rail. Obviously, towels they reflect a lot of heat, but uh, yeah, I can't keep my hand on that. So that's hot. Is it hot? Yeah, every, everywhere's hot now. If you want to go around and check all the radiators, Is it? yeah. Yeah, it's hot. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. good. Do you want to go in the um, Ash? Do you want to check all the radiators upstairs as well in the loft? Did I go? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Hot. Hot. I feel like I'm playing a game of Goldeneye again. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, yeah, that's getting hotter. That's getting hotter. Yeah, that one's getting hot. Yeah, they're all getting hot now. Really? Yeah. You can, happy if, if you want to give them a touch. So what happens, will it get, will it get hot right to the top? Touch it and you see. It's going to get warm up, right? Yeah, yeah, it's only just started up. Do they need replacing them? No, we flushed the system, so they don't need replacing now. And the, but the bathroom one, I find that... Do you want to go and fill the bathroom one? No, no, what I'm saying, is that just not designed properly? It's just too small? No. Is that really is, is, the right size for that? Yeah, bathroom? it's a bathroom. You don't need a massive. You only really need towel rows in the radiator. It's only to keep your towels up. Okay. If you want the bathroom to be hot, then I did. The radiator's never been this hot. Yeah, that's a good sign. Only, it's only been like lukewarm. Yeah. And then it just kind of fizzles out. Yeah, but it should get roasting, right? That will get hotter. Yeah, it's only just come on the system, so it will, it will get hotter and hotter as um, the more it runs. Because I've had this radiator for twenty odd years plus. It's because of the system that you had before. It wasn't designed properly. No, you yeah, the wrong type of system in. Yeah. And do you not find that we, because we have two boilers, yeah. we're burning twice gas? Yeah, you had, you had two 30 kilowatt boilers in there, so it wasn't, what is it wasn't efficient. Got? This is one 37 kilowatt boiler. So we should be burning less fuel. We should be using less gas now as well. Basically. Yeah, and it'll run more efficiently as well, the way we've set it up. Plus it costs us double as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Two, two, two sets of things to go wrong. Yeah, you can cut. You can go and have a look at the garage afterwards. Yeah. Oh, this one's roasting, man. That one there, just in the corner. Ooh. Oh yeah. That's always a good sign when the customer's whooping for joy. <laughs> yeah, that's hot. Uh, where else is the next radiator? Let's find the next one there. There we go. It's nice and hot. Oh my God. Uh, I've got one in that corner there. There we go. That one. That one. The both hot. That one. Happy days. Everything's hot. It's like a Victorian sort of like time of era, man. Are you, are you happy to be on film, on camera? Or, you, or you prefer not to? Okay. Well, you want to get my brother actually, he's more into that. So you're happy with the job? You're happy with how it works? I know 
it, it may not make sense to you what we've done, but no, it everyth does. It everything's does. getting hot now. How you wanted it? Well, let me check the loft upstairs. Go and, go and have a look. Is it hot? Go and check. That's fine. No, no, awesome. no I, I prefer customers to go and check. No, no, no as, as long as you. Ash, Ash has gone up to it's check anyway. It's never been hot. That's what I'm saying. It's never ever been hot. There's 55, 55 degrees upstairs now. Okay. The radio. You can't put your hand on them. That's what we want. Have you? Wait, it's so hot. Yeah, in the lock. It's really hot. It's really hot, isn't it? Really hot. Really hot, isn't it? Really hot. Really hot. Are you happy, Ash? Well. What's the verdict? Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Look, he's, he's at a bar. You can video him. <laughs> <laughs> I look he's, like scruff he's right at a, He's at a hot shower. Hot shower. No, stuff? the shower thing is a problem with that. The mixer? Yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, uh, Sam's going to check that out for you. Jerry, the, the radiators in the loft. Yeah. Three rooms. Yeah. <clears throat> Lovely and hot. We've never had that. We've never had that. Yeah? There you go. You heard it. Customers said they've never had it as hot as we've had it. We've yeah. got it now, so just goes to show when the system designs properly, yeah, we hot it water works. Now. You get hot water as well. No. Yeah. Is it on? Well, we haven't turned the cylinder on yet because yeah, we've yeah, just been in the hot. heating. But it's, it's, it's been it's you've been getting hot water through the immersion. Um, but like yeah. Pipe works, I told you to have a look at it. Yeah. Right, we are done. I just need to peel this off. Come off in one piece. Yep. Right. So this install is done. As you heard, customer is very, very happy. So just to give you a quick explanation of how this works, um, please feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong because I don't do big installs. I've learned this of other people. So this is my interpretation of how this system works with the Lola setter. So I've made any mistakes or any discrepancies or anything I've got a little bit wrong just drop me a comment and I'm happy to take constructive criticism back to it system boiler flow and return going to a low loss header which is essentially just a big stored water so like a small cylinder or a small radiator it's just a store of water we've then put an eight meter head external pump on there so that when the boiler gets a demand the boiler is essentially just heating up the low loss header so the flow just circulates back into the return so the boiler is kept satisfied by just heating this primary circuit. Now the secondary circuit is on this low loss header, is after the low loss header, sorry. So that's when you get a demand and this external pump comes on, that's on the flow. So that's pretty much from this point onwards or from this point onwards, it's as if you've got a heat only system. So you've got external pump, you've got your heating zone valve, you've got your hot water zone valve. Now, from what I've been told, you don't need a bypass on these because you've got the low loss header here. However, there is a radiator on the other side of here, which is, that's the flow for that, and that's the return coming back to it. So we've kept that as a bypass, just in case. Put the filling loop on. We're advised to put the expansion vessel as close to the return to the low loss header as possible because that's where it's gonna take up most of the expansion from the system because on the boiler side, all it needs is that the expansion vessel inside the boiler is enough to keep itself satisfied because that's the only circuit that it's doing. This circuit, where it's all coming back, is gonna be regulated by this external vessel. So we'll put an 18 litre vessel there, got an eight meter head pump to make sure that we can get water or heat everywhere to the, all the radiators and obviously heat up the cylinder as well. As you heard, the customers have said that those radiators that were up in the loft have never gotten hot. They're now roasting hot. Even the one in the downstairs where the other gentleman was, was it was his brother's room. That's never been hot. That's all getting hot now as well. So essentially, the way this works is that the boiler heats this up. So the boiler stays satisfied by just heating up the low loss header. When you get demand, that pump comes on and it draws the heat that's been stored in there away from there to the rest of the system. So the boiler doesn't overheat because it then modulates down. That now has modulated down to about a half flame. So it doesn't necessarily need to run at full whack because that is now taking the heat away from here. The boiler just needs to modulate down, keep this satisfied so that this can then provide heat to the rest of the system. Other than that, after this point, it's like a heat on the system. So you've got your zone valves going to the heating system going to your cylinder, coming back, blah, 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 blah. Obviously there were two combis here before, which you saw at the beginning. So we had a, hot, a T here for the cold mains going to the boiler, put a slip coupling on there. We had a separate hot water going somewhere here. And then we had another hot water feed, which was this one here. 
So that was going to there. So we basically teed that in there. That was going up here, jiggery pokery, around there, and that was coming up here, and that pipe was just capped. So now we've basically done a little bit of jiggery pokery there and teed in that to the hot water. So now all of the taps are fed from the unvented cylinder, no longer any, anything to do with the combi. Wiring, everything's done in the Wago wiring center. So taken the two zone valves, zone valve, hot water zone valve cylinder stats coming up through that bit of trunking going across into there. Got the heating zone valve coming up there, power, boiler power going into there and the external pump cable just going in through there. Bang, and we've got the Hive Mini multi-channel. Now the way that this is wired in, on most boilers, you would probably just wire the live into the switch lives to the boiler in the wiring center. So wherever your two oranges go is where your pump live would go into, unless you have a dedicated pump live for the boiler. With the valence, however, there is a connector block inside called X16. Now that is for an auxiliary relay. So that's D26 in your diagnostic codes. So when you start up the boiler, it will go through your startup assistant. When it gets to D26, it will ask you auxiliary relay, external pump. Yes, that then talks to that. So we don't actually have to do anything with that. When the boiler gets a demand, it will automatically talk to that. And once it kills the demand, as we know with the valence, they have a pump overrun. So that will also let this do a pump overrun as well, rather than just killing the demand completely. So it just controls the system a bit, be bit better in that respect. Again, if I've got any of that wrong, drop me a comment below. I'm happy to be corrected, but this is my interpretation of how this system works, how I've designed it. Ultimately, it works. The customer is over the moon. They've never had heating everywhere, evenly like this before. They do now, so I'm happy, customer's happy, my friend Sam's happy, and it's a job well done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and as always, please, 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 this was a big one for me, so it would be really helpful if as many of you are watching could hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that little bell button. I'd really appreciate it, and I'll catch you all on the next one, so enjoy.